This is the Genesis GV70, and it's a little bit like a Lexus NX. In more ways than one. You see, it is, like the Lexus, a mid-size SUV from Asia. But also, Hyundai owns the firm Genesis, much the same way that Toyota owns the firm Lexus, and it's its premium brand. And in this video, I'm going to find out if this new GV70 is in fact premium, because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the GV70. So one of the key things about Genesis vehicles is that they have this split light design. Really do like it actually. Though the rear, the shape of it, sort of reminds me of a Porsche Macan. Can you see that? Now models get a roof spoiler, though if you get a sport version, you have a slightly deeper rear bumper that looks more aggressive. Also you get round rather than sort of oblong exhaust. Though let me just find out if these exhausts are fake or real. I've got the Carwire sticker truth here. So yeah, fakes around, but there is a real exhaust in each of these, which is good news. Anyway, enough for that, let's move down the side. So you've got quite pronounced wheel arches like that and a sloping roof light, so it's slightly coupe-like. Different colored trim here, depending on which model you go for and roof bars, once again, depending on which trim level you go for, you get different colors. Alloy wheels start at 19 inches, which is what these are. And they don't look too small either. They do rise up to 21 inches though. I don't really think you need them. Then there's this line that comes right from the front of the car. It's sort of Bentley S, but also this part sort of reminds me of an old Jaguar S type. Can you see that? Anyhow, moving up the front, really like this crease in the bonnet. And then as you can see, look, the split light design again here at the front and then a really cool looking grille. And the Sport also has a deeper, more aggressive front bumper with more air intakes there. Look, the air intakes and the, yeah, they're real. This is a good looking car. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Put a pin comment. Do you like the look of this? Yes or no? Anyway, let's talk about the price. So it starts from £41,000. Here on the inside, the GV70 is blooming lovely. And it's also getting a little bit steamy because I tried to style out filming the last segment <laughs> as it started to rain. So I'm a bit wet and um, yeah, causing it to be a bit too moist in here. Anyhow, onto the car, enough about me. So, lovely design of the dash, really sweeping, different layers, and up here as well. Look at it, there's these elliptical shapes. Yeah, it looks like that, and there, and there. That's the general theme going throughout the cabin. And there's another theme, and that's high quality. I mean, lovely leather up here with stitching, lovely leather here, leather all the way here, 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 here. It just feels so expensive. And this one has the upgraded quilted seats, which is just like something you get in a Bentley. I really do like the design, and the steering wheel feels nice. This is the Sport, so it's got three spokes. You get two spokes on other models. And it's, yeah, the seating position is great. Lots of adjustment, and electrical operation of the steering column. You've got a nice, clear digital driver's display. You can cycle through different menus, all very clear, easy to use, and the design of it changes slightly depending on which driving mode you're in. And it has a 3D effect as well. You can't see it on the camera. You need to see it with your eyes for it to work properly. But it's just like you get on a Mercedes S-Class. And that brings me on to the fact that this car feels like a really premium product. It does feel more expensive inside than the equivalent BMW X3 or Audi Q5. Speaking of which, you get this huge infotainment screen here on all models. Now you can use it as a touch screen, but as you can see, it's a bit far to like reach forward when you're driving. So you've got an iDrive-like control here, a swivel wheel. The good news is, is that you don't have to use this to control the climate control because there's a separate section for it here. So some of it is actual physical buttons but bits are touchscreeny, although at least they have their own separate touchscreen, so you're not having to delve through menus when you're driving along. Other things I like are this, look, got a little bit of storage under here and your 12-volt socket, and everything just feels expensive. You've got felt in here. You've got a couple of cup holders here, which is where I'm keeping the car's key. And I like this. A little drawer for your mobile phone. Even my big fold, which is quite long, fits in there. And you've got two USB ports as well. And in here is your glove box. Let's see if it opens in an expensive way. You ready for it? Ah, well, ah. It's damped, but it kind of, yeah, flops open a little bit too quickly. That is a minor complaint, because otherwise this is lovely. Okay, last thing, bottle test. Yeah, big bottle fits in there. Practical, comfy, and luxurious. Now, how am I looking? A little bit drenched. Actually, I can check myself out using the huge vanity mirrors. Yep. <sighs> still lovely. Now, if you find these videos lovely and you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. To, I don't know why I'm laughing at my own jokes. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Here in the back of the GV70, knee room is good. Headroom's good as well. I love the fact that you can recline the back seats like that. They do recline quite a lot. So yeah, it's super comfy. My only complaint is that the foot space feels a little bit tight. Speaking of room for your feet, if you carry three people at once, this huge lump in the floor does get in the way. So you end up playing foot walls with passengers either side. Oh well, not a major problem. Tell you what I do like though, 
quality just extends back here. It feels really, really expensive. Right down to the feeling of the controls for the climate. Actually, underneath the climate control, you've got two USB ports there. Handy. Now, go to this test. Go all the way down, go all the way down, go all the way down. Oh, not quite. Bit of a shame because the back window is huge, so you do get a really good view out. Do you have through loading? No. Not on this car? No. No. That's someone agreeing with me off camera. You definitely don't. Why don't, it looks like you're gonna get it, but you don't. That is annoying. Yeah, a couple of cup holders there. Look, you end up putting your wrist in it, but you get that on loads of cars. And you've got some huge door bins. Oh God, even that, that feels so expensive. There's so much squidgy, soft, yielding material in this car. It feels so premium. And like, yeah, there's room for your bottle as well. And you've got some storage nets here on the seat backs. Yeah, fairly nice back here. Oh yeah, Alcantara headlining. Well, not Alcantara, but Alcantara-like. It really does just feel a lot more expensive than the German counterparts. It really, really does. Really, really, really. Lots of reallys there, just to emphasise the point. Right, back outside again, because the rain stopped. I want to show you the boot. I love the way you open it. You just press this button here, look. Don't have to reach down there, anything like that. Very clever. Also, there's no load lip, so it's dead easy to slide things in and out. Lovely job. And then underneath here, you've got your kind of tire repair kit and stuff. Look at this. There is your load cover. Bear with me while I get it out. <laughs> See? That's not getting yeeted because they've got a really good solution for it. Nice one, Genesis. I'll have more of that kind of clever thinking, please. Right, let me just put it all back together. Several bad puns later. Yeah. Right. Then you've got some nettings here, look, tie down points, 12 volt socket. And I like the fact that you don't have to like lean in to fold the seats down. You can do it by these levers here. Go on, there we go. And you get a flat floor pretty much, which makes it easier to slide things to the front. Ah, there we go. Now, in terms of the capacity, you've got 542 litres, which is very similar to its German competitors that have 550 litres. If you have the electric version, though, the boot capacity drops because you've got batteries under there to about 500 litres. However, you then get a front boot because there's no internal combustion engine underneath there. You then get an extra 20 litres back, so it's pretty much the same size in terms of practicality. I'm really struggling to find a link to where I talk you through the bad things about this car. There is one, it's a fact that unlike with the Germans, you can't get three-way folding seats in the back so that you can have two people sat either side, then long objects through the middle. So, let's just take that one. Go on. The brakes are quite noisy when you're just creeping along at slow speeds. Have a listen to this. So imagine you're like controlling the car in traffic, just easing forward. Can you hear that? What a weird noise. Sort of like a sinking ship. We only have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And like with most new cars, they're not wireless. Look, I'm wired. No, I'm not. Oh dear. I've lost Android Auto now. The reversing camera is located quite low down, which means it quickly gets covered in road grime, especially in the winter. And you have to get out to wipe it occasionally because it doesn't have a little washer like some other systems do. So you just stick them like that there, it's cleaner. Having a rotary controller for the gear selector looks cool, but having it so close to a rotary controller for the infotainment system means that sometimes when you're maneuvering and you go down to actually grab or change gear to go into reverse or drive, you end up just changing the menu on your infotainment screen and go nowhere. While the electric window motors in this car are very quiet, if the window is wet, you get this strange noise. Maybe it's particular to this exact car and the other GV70s don't do it. Or maybe they all do. I don't know. My own experience is this car. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Within the infotainment system, you have something called sounds of nature. And what it has is various like ambient noises. So you've got a lively forest near the crickets or whatever the RC car does. Then there's calm sea waves. Then there's a rainy day. Now I found this perfect for keeping my daughter asleep for as long as possible. Open air cafe, warm on that one. Then there's a warm fireplace. And the last one is a snowy village. It actually sounds like someone eating, what could they be eating? That sounds like someone eating an apple. 
You can use the key fob as a remote control to drive the car forward and backwards in and out of tight parking spaces. So you just press and hold this button and it should start the engine. There it is, started. And then I use this button to move it forward. Are you ready? Do you want to come forward? Come on. Come on. Come on, forward, 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 forward. There we go. And it's got sensors to stop it crashing into stuff like, don't run me over. You see, see it didn't run me over. And now I can make it go backwards. Go on, go backwards. Come on, go backwards. That's it, go on. So I spooked it then. See if I can catch it out. Ready, ready for this? Don't run me over. I didn't run me over. Look at that, and you can see, if I open it up, come here, have a look. Look, we're not faking it. There's no one inside, no one. Quite handy, that. This car has adaptive dampers as standard, and you have a camera just behind there that can read the road ahead, and it slackens off the suspension if it spots a bump. That's the kind of feature that you only normally get on things like Rolls Royces. Also, as well as your normal driving modes, you have something called terrain response mode, look there, and it sets up the car, such as the gearbox and the engine response, depending on if you're driving on snow, mud, or sand. And you can even fit it with a limited slip rear differential for improved traction. There are two buttons on the side of the front passenger seat, which allows the person behind to control the seat so they can create a little bit more space. Let me move it forward slightly. Also, you can use it to annoy the person in the front. I think kids would like getting their own back on their parents, wouldn't they? Oh, yes. Jack's very tall. We're going to make him very small by squishing him as much as we possibly can. That's how I like to roll. Look at that. It's very roomy back here. Just like with the German competition, Genesis will sell you a lot of extra tech for a lot of extra money. However, you do get some pretty good stuff with it. For instance, for £4,000, you can get a pack which includes surround view cameras with lovely 3D effects so you can really look around the vehicle. It also includes, look at this, I love this feature, a blind spot vision camera. So when you indicate in the dial, it actually shows you a little camera feed so you can see exactly what's just in your blind spot. And if you indicate in left, you'll get the same view from the left camera. That is excellent. The pack also includes things like auto cruise control with lane keeping assist and some other bits and pieces as well. You get the GV70 with a 2.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine with 304 horsepower. And that's what this car has. There's a diesel, a 2.2 litre, and that has 210 horsepower. Both of those cars are four wheel drive and they have an eight speed automatic gearbox. Now, if you don't want to have to go to a petrol station at all, there is an electric version which has dual motors, so it's also four-wheel drive. This car's tweeting at me for some reason. What's going on? Anyway, the EV has 490 horsepower, so it should have pretty strong performance. Okay, now let's see what the GV70 is like to drive, starting with on faster roads, such as on the motorway or dual carriageway. So I'm gonna overtake this car in front of me, doing 40, let's floor it, see what happens. Well, that took a wee while to kick down, but now we're moving. Progress is pretty rapid. Now, I don't know if you heard that, First of all, it's the lane departure warning <laughs> from the safety system, but also the fact that when you floor it, this petrol engine does get a little bit kind of vocal, spoils the ambience, which is a bit of a shame because when you're just cruising, this car is very, very quiet. You hardly get any wind noise, you hardly get any road noise, very relaxing on the motorway. And obviously if you need it, you've got automatic cruise control with lane keeping assist to keep you safe distance from the car in front and steer to keep you in lane. Really does just take the strain out of longer journeys, as do the really, really comfy seats. Yes, I could do lots of miles in this car apart from the fact that it's not the most efficient this petrol model i'm kidding 23.8 miles per gallon and constantly told off by the late departure warning but 23.8 miles per gallon <gasps> yeah you might want the diesel if you're doing lots and lots of miles now let's find out what this car's like on a twisty road i'm going to put the drive mode into sport oh i like the way the dial's change actually we've got one more sport plus can I put the gearbox in manual? I'm just going to take over with the pedals. Well, uh, <laughs> that's the auto brake because I got too close to our camera car in front. When you got this in sports mode, Sport Plus actually, it just sharpens everything up, makes the suspension a little bit more bouncy. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to go back into comfort because really, this is not a sports car, is it? And now it's dealing with the bumps better. It will mean that it just leans a little bit more in the bends and this car does lean a bit more than average, say, compared to an Audi Q5 in the bends. The steering's fine though, it's Acura, but it doesn't have such a sporty feel as some other sport SUVs, but I'm fine with that. It does feel a little bit heavier than an Audi Q5. That's a bit more car-like when you're driving it, whereas this is a bit more on the side of SUV. However, it's totally competent on a twisty road. 
absolutely fine. It's definitely better having it in comfort because the suspension is much better at dealing with the bumps. You do notice it actually, that it's generally quite a comfortable car. That clever suspension system does a good job of ironing out the bigger bumps. What it's not so good at is like the real small imperfections, like the high frequency stuff. And you do feel like the little shimmies through the cabin. But overall, yeah, this is a really comfy car that handles well enough. Finally, let's see what the GV70 is like when you're driving around town. So race driving position gives you a good view forward. It's actually really easy to see where the front corners of the car are. The view out the back window is pretty decent as well. This pillar is a bit thick, which creates a bit of a blind spot, but it's not too bad. And the door mirrors aren't huge, but they give you enough vision. And then obviously you've got all those safety cameras to help you out as well. So let's try and do a U-turn, see how maneuverable it is. Because that's obviously very important when you're driving around town and you take a wrong turning or you need to weed through traffic. So let's have a little go. Can I make it round? The turning circle is apparently 11.5, which is slightly better than the German equivalent. So let's see if I can do it without touching the curb. Come on, I think I've already cocked it up. No, I've cocked it up already. Right, is anyone coming? No, right, I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> I've got to give it a fair go. It's really handy with the cameras, let's see. If I start a bit further back, maybe I can do it. Right, here we go. Come on, come on, I haven't touched the curb yet. Come on, nah. I'm living in a dream world if I think I'm gonna do it in there. I'm gonna need a blooming black cab. Do you know what, I keep going for the infotainment switch. <laughs> it really does go on your nerves. I think it's gonna take quite a bit of muscle memory to just get you going for the right thing. Here we go, three point turn. Appropriately, we have a learner driver there. Look at my three point turn, is it quality? See, this is how you do it. There. It's a clear pass, I think. Didn't make it all the way around, but yeah, it's an easy car to drive in town. And while the gearbox might not be the most responsive when you suddenly floor it, when you're just mooching about, it's really smooth to change gear. You hardly know it's doing its thing and you don't hear the petrol engine at all either. It's a nice car. Now I'm gonna do a quick brake test on the GV70. See how long it takes to stop from 60 miles an hour. Here we go, full emergency stop coming up now. Ugh. So that took 35 meters, which is okay, but not incredible. One last thing to do. Finally, let's see how quick the GV70 is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Supposed to do it in 6.1 seconds, but I'm gonna find out for myself using my specialist timing gear up here. Let's do it, brake boost. Oh, the engine is quite noisy. 0 to 60, 6.55, not quite 6.1, but I'll take that. So then, what's my final verdict on the Genesis GV70? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist this car. Its engines might not be quite as good as its key competitors, and it might not have quite so much room as some of them in the back seats. However, it looks great, it's nice to drive, and it's extremely well equipped for the money. 